here's the big mistake. Right here. You go to recover. That's 50, yeah. Well, no, not even the 50. You go to recover. You see your teammate. Your teammate's going to be the first man back on this ball. You're probably looking for the boost, and you go right here in front of your teammate. This is bad. Hey guys, it's Goose. In this coaching session, I worked with Pal, who's a C3 player from the Middle East. This is the longer of the two replays we reviewed, where we tried to pick apart every detail of his gameplay. I'm going to be uploading the second replay review later, where we go through the game quickly and look for patterns in his gameplay. Please let me know what you think. I'm trying to get better at these videos, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, good. So those are things that are fixable. We're going to take a look at the replay, and I'm going to try to tell you if you know, it, your mistakes are more positional and decision-making, or if they're really coming from lacking practice in a certain area. But at the end of the day, we're going to locate, you know, your common mistakes, things that are a pattern, and then you'll be able to focus on fixing them, and the improvement should be a lot faster. Uh, let's take a look at the replays. Okay, cool. Let's, let's watch. I tell this to everyone. 95% of your kickoffs, cheat. Cheat up the field. Almost always, especially in twos. But here, here uh, I, I told them to force it. Okay, awesome. Well, that's exactly what I was going to say. Unless you communicate with your teammate to say back right, back left. Yep. I typically find it's easier for, um, for the, the person who's taking the kickoff to hit it behind them. So I don't know if this is just your preference or how they like to win it. It doesn't really matter. Um, unless you call it out, always cheat. And then I find it easier if the kickoff's happening on the right, you go behind them. Um, but again, it's preference. Yeah. But it's good to know that you uh, called for that. But see, that's exactly what I mean. It's, it's a lot easier for your teammate to hit the ball behind them um, than it is to the other side yeah, of the field. Yeah. All right, first things first, you're already, like, I can see that you're, you're playing defense pretty well, you're ready to challenge this, but you're wasting a lot of boost. I like the boost for the recovery, but then use a little bit, make sure you get this pad, because look, you're trying to set up the bounce dribble, and you're doing it by wasting your boost and you leave yeah. yourself with zero. This is a tough one. I, I, yeah, I think it's your teammate's fault. He should have gone. Yeah, this, this one is your teammate's fault. Um, he's a little close up on the play, and then boom, right here, he should have jumped for it. Yeah, he's still yeah. close. Um, so it's a little difficult. What you could have done better is a little bit quicker on the recovery. But again, that's that one's really your, on your teammate, unfortunately. Nice demo. I like that you're looking for another one. Very close on your teammate here. Like... Yeah, we're both bad at yeah. passing. Generally in twos, the, the idea is to be diagonal and behind your teammate. Um, I would say that if you're getting in position for a pass, that's usually a good thing, but a big but mistake, and I'm not saying this is what you did, but this is a big mistake across of a lot a lot of Rocket League players, is that you get open for the pass, and then your teammate doesn't pass the ball, then it's your job to get far away from your teammate because you realize, okay, the pass isn't coming right now when it's a good idea to pass, so if you just stay there, the opponents have time to prepare for it, and it won't be as good of a play. So... The idea, and we'll look for this in your in the rest of your replay, but the idea is that um, you get open for a pass. If in that first split second your teammate doesn't pass it, then you back away and try to get further away and give them space with the ball because they're going to solo play it. Here he tries to pass it, but you get a little close up, which same thing, like what I just said, pass should have come right there. If not, then getting a little further away, you'd be more prepared for yeah. the touch. Yeah, I should have went back. It's a bad pass, just, yeah. yeah, don't go. This clear needs to be way better. If you're, if you're trying for Grand Champ, this cannot hit the ceiling. And 
if it does, the best thing to do. Yeah, should have slowed. Yeah, play. roll it. Like literally, just catch it. You're first to this ball. You don't have to jump at all. Yeah, you had time and mm -hmm. boost. Okay, small thing, but again, if you're champ three and you're going for grand champ, it's gonna start to be all about the little efficiencies and doing everything as fast as possible. So playing fast is good, uh, as long as the decision making is good. So like tiny thing I notice here is you land on the ceiling, jump down, like literally double jump towards the ground. It'll get you down faster. Every little bit will count. Yeah, here. Here, yeah, I wanted to do that, but uh, my, I didn't get the four wheels on the ceiling. A shot by your teammate. Alright, I'm seeing a big stretch of gameplay without any goals, so this'll be good. Your kickoffs look really nice. I like your kickoffs. Yeah, I had to train a lot on them once. Okay. Mistake. Big mistake. Um, you challenge the ball here. Everything up to this point on the in the gameplay, I think you're making the right decision. Like. Here's a big place where a lot of people will struggle. Yeah, I should have, I should have uh, faked challenge. Yeah, well, that's not even what I'm going to tell you. Like, you, there's a decision to be made, which is to either fake challenge or, um, or actually go for it. And you're right, you should have fake challenged, but you went anyways and you still hit the ball. So sometimes the second best option still works. There's an, it's, it's not a game where the best option always works 100% of the time. There's a reason that uh, when a pro whiffs, everyone else whiffs because they're trying to cover the shot, right? It's it's not like they're trying to whiff at the ball. You get what I'm saying. The the On paper, the best option is sometimes not always the best. Anyways, you challenge, and I like that you go right after your teammate challenged. You know, when you're going to do this in your twos games, if they get it past your teammate, the decision should be Am I able to challenge really quickly after my teammate just went? Or if I don't get there quick enough, that's when you throw in a fake challenge and try to play defense. So I like how quickly you went after your teammate went for the ball, but still, he has control, probably fake challenge. Here's the big mistake. Right here. You go to recover. At 50, yeah. Well, no, not even the 50. You go to recover. You see your teammate. Your teammate's going to be the first man back on this ball. You're probably looking for the boost, and you go right here in front of your teammate. This is bad. Um, this is really bad, and this happens way more often than you'd think. You know, you, you make your 50, you, you think, okay, got to get back on defense, and I love that you're getting back on defense quickly. But from your teammate's perspective, now you're just in the way, and he's trying to cover the net from close up. Everything to his left side here is open. And you're on the uh, on the back wall here. Sure, you might make the save, but you guys are really just leaving, um, you know, this whole side of the net open. You know what I mean? Versus if, uh, we'll go back here for a second. You know, the 50-50 comes out, you recover fast, and now instead you drive back behind your teammate to the far post and defend from inside the net. Then your teammate can go and challenge this, knowing that you're behind them covering the net. And then once your teammate goes, you come up towards the near post, you get ready to follow your teammate's shot. Maybe it's going up on offense and getting open for a pass. Maybe you need a challenge again. But that's the basics of twos is, okay, my teammate is going to be first to the ball here. So instead of cutting in front of him, going for the boost, I'm picking up these pads. I'm coming to the far post and letting them challenge. And then what should happen is, let's say this guy on orange gets it past your teammate, then you're ready to follow it up and your teammate should be doing the exact same thing. You know, they make the challenge here, they miss, they come back down, they rotate towards the outfield, pick up these pads, and then they get a net behind you. That's basic 2v2 rotation. You know, there, there's obviously exceptions to the rule, but here... You get in front of your teammate, you're putting yourself at disadvantage. You're not defending your net. See, the ball goes yeah. here, and you and your teammate are defending from the same side. This should be a goal for Orange if they shoot it well. I don't know why you didn't go. I would not go for that with 10 boost. Like, maybe picking up a pad? Uh, too aggressive. 
Yeah, I mean, aggression is good because one of the hardest parts for people is when, when they're afraid to challenge, when they don't know when to challenge. And I like your aggression, but it, it needs refining. So, like, you need to pick up one extra small pad to go for this safely because if you miss that ball, you're floating at their backboard with zero boost, right? And then your teammate's left in a 2v1, so you've got to be more aware of that. Yeah. I want to point out a good thing you did here as well. This, like, you would not, you would not believe how many times I see players in this position slam it off the backboard. Whether you dribble this or go up with it, I'm just, I'm happy that you didn't hit it at the backboard with a lot of power. Um, that happens so often. So good job. Yeah. Not the best setup. The, the thought is right, the execution, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's bad. Like, right here, okay, you're not hitting the ball, you know that. Yet you're still trying to go towards it and you kind of reverse, and now you cut off your teammate. Here you're not letting your teammate... Bad ball just Exactly, so much. <laughs> exactly, because your teammate has a challenge on this, but he's not going, and this could just be because he's being a good teammate. He sees you're up on the ball, so he's giving you space. That's what a... Yeah, he's a very good That's what teammate. a good teammate does, but you made the mistake of being way too close and not knowing that, okay, after I mess up this touch, my contribution is done, so then you need to either go look for a bump on the goalie, yeah. but the, the idea is, okay, if I can't do anything useful with it now, I'm getting far away from the ball, and I'm getting far away fast, which you did neither of those things. And then you, you cut your teammate again, which I want to see from his perspective. So he rotates back. If you get behind him here, so like, I'm just imagining that, okay, your teammate's getting ready. He's getting in a shadowing position. If instead of cutting at the ball, you go behind him, that lets him know, okay, I can go challenge because my teammate's covering behind me. Unless you call out to him, hey, yeah. I'm going to cut rotation and interrupt this guy, um, then that's okay. I mean, this is not, you know, a terrible play that's going to result in you getting scored on. You just have to make sure your teammate's aware yeah. that you're cutting rotation. And then you steal his boost. <laughs> so you cut rotation, <laughs> and now you need to get behind your teammate. You go in front of him, take his boost, and how much is he left with? 60 is okay, but he's, he's slowing down because he's accounting for you getting in his way. You know, he could be going at this ball with speed, but he's, he's just trying to play around you. So the chemistry is good. You know, you guys yeah. play around each other, which is awesome. But you're, you're getting in his way. Okay. Here too. So I like that you challenged that. I'm not even mad that the challenge didn't go exactly where you wanted it to, right? You probably wanted this to go to their side. The problem is, yeah. you see your teammate jump, and you just kind of tap your boost button underneath him. So you're wasting boost, and you're not going anywhere useful. You see your teammate jump, and the ball is a dangerous mm. ball like this one get in your net. You have to like get back to net fast. Uh, and I would say in this position as well, um, the actual rotation should be something like, uh, here, we'll go back a little bit. We'll watch from here. This challenge happens. Okay. I want your rotation to be into net like this kind of shadowing because the ball is moving this way across the field, right? So more likely than not, it's going to cross over the midline and this is going to end up being the far post. So you're putting faith in your teammate saying, okay, you jump for this ball, but what happens when he misses and you're just using boost under here? You lose sight of this guy who's probably going to attack, uh, and you also lose sight of this guy who will probably come and bump you if he can. So instead of wasting your boost underneath your teammate here, you really should be going back to cover your net because you see your teammates up. This is This is ball chasing at its finest right here. yeah that was uh yeah you gotta yeah. let your teammate cook you gotta let him make his contribution at gc you want one touch and a follow-up touch that makes the defense hesitate so here you're even let's just assume that you don't know whether or not your teammate has a follow-up on this you want to at least give him the chance to follow that touch cover the net and then they get it past you same thing here near post rotation 
that should have been a goal. So, okay, you got the boost here. Yeah. You see your teammate's the first guy in net, and instead you rotate towards the near post, where instead, as we just discussed, after this happens, you come in and uh, you rotate from here to back here. This is in your teammate's way. Grabbing this boost is not going to help. This guy's probably going to hit the ball first. Uh, he's probably going to get the boost anyways. And defending from here, even if your teammate's trying to cover this, what he needs help with is covering behind him. I guarantee you this guy, he's going to come in here, turn around, get ready to save the shot, preferably from inside the net. If he turns this way, I'm going to be mad at your teammate. But anyways, he turns, and what he needs help with is covering the area behind him. He can cover in front of him just fine. And even if he doesn't hit the ball, he'll at least make this guy's life hard enough where he's not going to get a good shot on that. Your teammate needs the help behind him. See, they should have scored there. Yeah, that was close. Oh, that's a mistake. I would have just dribbled this, you know, like get underneath yeah, the ball. I was going to yeah, do that. Yeah, he's giving but... you space. It's, it's okay, because you... Too strong of a yeah, touch. You dodged the other guy. Yeah, I thought, I thought that... Yeah. Yeah. Here, again, your, your contribution is done. You're at zero boost. So, what we talked about is your first thought should be, I'm going to get really far away from this ball. Instead, you turn underneath it, hoping this boost will spawn. And now, you're not helping as much on defense. And you're... I mean, you... It goes down the middle, so it's kind of hard to... Uh, Kind of hard to comment on but again here you're not as helpful on the play versus if you um if you had turned this way and gone towards this side of the field that lets your teammate know hey your turn to challenge this i'm gonna get behind you and cover all the space it'll really enable your teammate to be a lot more effective so once once yeah. you once your good touches are done start focusing on getting far away from the ball and getting far away fast That should be a goal. Uh, another miss. Yeah. That's a hard read. That's just training packs. Yeah, that, that bounce. It's mm -hmm. just... Ooh, ooh, ooh. We don't need to talk about this one. You know what happened here. <laughs> yeah. I, know. I don't like that after you failed your recovery, you then turned up the field. <laughs> like, like you're, you're recovering here. <laughs> You know, get behind your teammate, give him the opportunity to go. This is, remember we talked about this at the beginning? You're in a good spot for a pass here. Pass doesn't come. Okay, give up on it. Pass is not coming. Go okay. cover for what you're, go cover for your teammate's solo play. Instead, now you're both in a really bad spot and they're going to get a big clear. Another thing too, be careful of this. Watch your boost here. You're just like tapping the boost button. Yeah. It needs to be more purposeful. Like you need to decide when you want to get to supersonic speed and use your boost to get to supersonic speed. But don't just tap it. Tapping it's probably the worst thing you can do because you're really not gaining all that much. Uh, you know, a front flip will do. Or sometimes, yeah, you just need a boost, but then hold the boost button and get to supersonic speed and then let go of the boost button once you're supersonic yeah. speed. You're doing that a lot this game, you're like tapping. Probably because... Yeah. Yeah, because probably if uh, too much freestyle, yeah. you know, have to tap. Okay, again, like, this is this is a situation where it's like, okay, you're probably better off, maybe just bump this guy, but jumping for this, like, you're, you're really leaving yourself vulnerable. Like, this guy, this guy could have easily beat you here. Ah, uh, he should have, he should have jumped earlier. But you're going so slow, and I know you're trying to pass it to your teammate here, but you're probably better off just trying to bump the other guy and get out, you know? Like, same thing. You, it's, it's getting in your teammate's way. He's ready to turn and challenge that if you get behind him. Like here, he's preparing to challenge this guy. And it would be so different if, um, if you just took I off just this way. Back, yeah. And then he knows, okay, I can challenge this. It's it's gonna be so helpful. You really need to 
get behind your teammates more. That's the main thing I'm noticing here. It's a good pass. You know, don't get me wrong, you passed it well. Ooh. Yeah, that should have been a goal for them as well. So, one thing is when you're getting back on defense, this is something a lot of people struggle with, is just tap your camera button twice, look forward real quick, just to make sure you know where you're going, and then look back at the ball. Um, like, it, it will not hurt you if the second this guy clears the ball here, and you're deciding I'm going back, look forward because you won't mess up your recoveries, and then look back at the ball. That way you know where the goal is, you have a much easier time playing defense instead of staring up at the ball the whole time. Because see, you messed up your, uh, your recovery. Yeah where you probably could have gotten into the far post from here, but you mess up your recovery and all of a sudden you're near post and they have a double tap attempt. I don't love this touch either. You know, like here, I wouldn't have even jumped off the wall for this. The, you saw that the other guy missed, and then you... Uh, yeah, yeah, that was a fake. That was a fake. Uh, I see. I probably wouldn't have gone for the... You have 70 boost in the tank here. You know, you don't need to go get that mid boost. You know, you could... So, wait, you don't have 70 boost in the tank. That was just a glitch. Okay. Either way, uh, yeah. either way, um, I would, instead of going for this one, you know, you, there's an opportunity to be there to score. So you stop here and you see your teammate is hitting it towards net. You only need like 20 boost to do whatever. I don't know why it keeps saying like 65 or whatever but from here you know what would be most helpful to your teammate would be pick up this boost pad pick up this one pick up this one and then you're here with 30 40 boost in the tank ready to play off what happens and let's just imagine you know you come around here right now this ball goes up that's scorable or passable yeah, you know like that's that's something you could have been there for if you hadn't taken the time to go all the way to this. So yeah, it's it's part of, you know, being aware of, okay, my teammate is now centering the ball. If your teammate is going for a shot, that's a really good opportunity to score because they have to make a save. And usually when people make a save, that's where they're prone to making mistakes. But you're not there to help, you know. You could have been right there on the play to at least try again. I'm gonna miss this. <laughs> That's okay. The miss is fine. What I don't like is the lack of front flips. Like here, I would have front flipped already. Save your boost. Get to that supersonic speed. Like, do a, Do you know how to speed flip? Okay, yeah. you basically, you do a speed flip to get into the play fast. Instead, you're wasting a lot of boost and you're staying on the ground. And then you're not as confident in your shot because you don't have a lot of boost to shoot it well. Like... This flip that you do after to recover, it's not a speed flip, but like it's the right idea, you know? You obviously know how to do that. Incorporate it more. Uh, yeah, I yeah. missed it here. I missed it, yeah. This is another good thing that you're doing that I want to point out. Um, it's important to remember this, that when the, the guy has the ball in front of you, even if you don't have a chance of catching him, uh, the best thing to do is to chase behind him as fast as possible. Because at least what you're doing is cutting his, you're, you're cutting his options of slowing down. He basically has to choose the fastest shot possible because he knows you're behind him. Yeah. Uh, so you're helping your teammate by eliminating the option to slow it down and choose his shot. So I like that you did this. Just chase him even if you can't catch him. Okay, let's see how you play here. Scary. <laughs> I would honestly instead hang on to the 12 boost here. So your teammate's the one who made the save. Usually, and this is a usually, there's never a 100% of the time do this, do that. But usually, the guy who makes the save then goes for the follow-up touch on the ball, unless it's a pass or just a huge clear or something like that. So you probably should have hung it. Wait, now it says you have zero. It's so strange. Oh, you do have zero. That's tough. I still would have let your teammate go for it and just stayed in the far post. Let's take a look at what that would have looked like. I don't even know how this play uh, turns out, but let's just imagine that you stayed here for a second. Uh, I guess, yeah, your teammate, 
Hard to say. You know what? We'll move on. But I would have stayed in net. I, I definitely would have. Because you're, you're exposing yourself to danger for boost, you know? Like, right here, this guy got 100 boost on orange team. He has first touch on the ball, clearly, and you leave your net to not challenge him, to not make his shot any harder. All you've done is take away a defender, which is bad. Yeah, that's point. Again, 12 boost. Like, you see how he hesitated when you went up for this? There are better ways to... Yeah, this was a... Yeah, yeah, there are better ways to fake uh, than this. I would have either yeah. just like jumped once and backflipped, or I'll show you, I do this a lot where I jump up, turn my car over, and jump once towards the ground, and then land on my wheels. Those are the best ways to fake because you get on your wheels quickly and you're able to follow a touch. I'll show you that at the end of this. Um, but there's better ways to fake this. Don't, don't float, essentially. You want to have a backup that if you're going to fake jump at something, that you're getting back down to the ground quick. Because they're going to realize very quickly that it's a fake yeah. jump and that you're not going to clear it. Again, it's, it's just a little bit reluctant to go play in your net. So I would have, from here, you know, I would have thought, this is, this is dangerous. So you want to go around here, play the far post. From the far post, if you have some momentum then you're not going to have all that much trouble saving a shot, even if it goes top right corner. But you're getting out of your teammate's way, you're letting the, your teammate maybe make this shot difficult for them, and if you defend from here, you're ready to save a shot, and your teammate can go challenge, and then you can start to pick up the boost. But it seems like you're very, very eager to clear the ball. Um, so from here, you follow it, and with 12 boost, you know your teammate's probably low. Surprised he didn't get the touch, but they're yeah they're gonna score here, right? They're gonna score here because yeah. you're wow the boost glitch is weird, but they're gonna score here because you're trying to clear it. You're not defending your net as much as you should. You know you're getting nervous, basically thinking I'm low boost. This is gonna be really hard to make the save. But then you take yourself out of the net and you give yourself a zero percent chance of making the save. Something to look out for. It seems like it's a pattern in this game so far. Interesting kickoff. I'm surprised that got by. Yeah. Right, this is an example of where the flip up probably isn't so good. It's very committal. Yeah. It's not the worst idea. I still like the position. I think, yeah, I didn't think it's gonna like bounce back. I love that clear. Good job. It can be a little cleaner. Like. That's just training packs, but you made a good decision here, which is to stay on the ball. This is what I was talking about, where you get the one-two. Like, this guy missed. Oops, that was him. Yeah. Because you get that one touch, and he's playing the one touch, and then you hit it past him. Yeah, the so those touch. are, are going to be really important. But I, I'm just trying to say, I like how you played this. For future reference, uh, once you get it past the other guy, as you get better at the game, try to land underneath this ball and catch it that's just going to be practice you know no amount of coaching can make you just good at that but for future reference try to get more and more touches on the ball as you go keep it close keep it controlled but you still end up playing it really well here you steal their boost just save some of it with a front flip to go back speed flip backwards don't don't just hold boost to reach supersonic Yeah, because it was uh, like a dangerous mm -hmm. ball. Right. It's still speed flipping backwards when you know you're gonna have to get into net anyways. Okay, never, never do this again. <laughs> you stop moving and then take off. Never do that ever. You never want to take off from a standstill unless the ball is like directly above you. You you either go and you challenge this guy or you turn back, but you just you hesitate. You stop moving and you try to jump. That's not great. It ends up being a great pass, which again, that's why not always is the... Yeah, yeah sometimes the wrong play yeah. is the right play. Also remember what we talked about, tapping the boost button for no reason. Yeah, you, yeah, you dropped yourself to 
like 75 would have been at 100 with just a front flip. Nice challenge. Beautiful. Okay, this was nice. I don't like that you're using so much boost to recover afterwards. Like, you know that's a pass. Just hold boost to fly at the wall a little bit, and then save some for your recovery. You're boosting all the way through to the near post. Score, which is great, but you're leaving yourself with nothing if you need to get back. Yeah. Ooh, turn up the field. You got it past two of them. Your teammate's about to get the ball. You just grab that boost. You turn the other way. You get ready for a pass here. You have total advantage. And then turning to your right up the field. Perfect, but you turn back. Good that you got the bump. Oh, no. And, uh... <laughs> if you turn up the field, you'll have an easier time with that as well. Like, that that's just trainings as well. This, this sucks. Yeah. Your teammate went for the bump. Consistency. Yeah. Shooting training. Lots and lots of shooting training. Started so good. Double tap? an attempt let's see your yeah. recovery like that that's how i want you to be getting back every time like when you know you need to get back this is how you do it like you make sure you go down the middle this is again near post rotation like it looks like you want to be close to the ball and this has been a topic this entire replay and i wonder if it's going to be the same in other games that you played but the main thing i'm noticing is that you're not putting enough faith in a teammate that you're partied up with. You know, you should think, I trust my teammate to go get this. In Champ 3, you can start to do that, or you can at least say, I trust them enough so that they make the other guy's life on Orange hard so that they don't get a good shot on net. But go towards your net. You're going towards the ball here, and this leaves everything open. You and your teammate are now on the same side, um, which hurts your defense. Yeah. Okay, there I would have had ball cam on because this could have been a great pass to you. Like, look at what your teammate sees. If if you recovered better, um, like if your recovery was a little better and you had ball cam on, you could be up the wall ready to receive a pass and redirect it in net. That's going to be grand champ level plays where the recovery is clean. And I, I get it, it's two pieces here why it didn't work out, but it's it's good to talk about what would have been ideal if, uh, oops, I'm going to keep it in player view. If you're here and you recover well and you have ball cam on, um, then you're up here and you're looking at the ball. Oops, I didn't mean to do, I meant to stay and fly, sorry. Okay, so you'll be up here. You'll be looking at, where's the? There, you'll be looking at the ball, and your teammate could launch the ball up to you, and you shoot on net. You know what I mean? Uh, what a, what a best, so, yeah. ball cam on, especially when you know your teammate is about to have a free touch, because as you progress, teammates are going to pass you the ball. So here, sure, the recovery was messed up, but the big problem is that you look away, and you stay looking away until you're done recovering. Could have been a pass coming, and you wouldn't have been ready for it. Shooting practice. This should be a much better shot. Just grind yeah. your shooting trainings. Hit it with the corner of your car, the front corner, not the side. That ball needs to be going way faster and at the top of the crossbar. Yeah, if I would, the bounce. Please. Good demos. Good job looking for it. And you do so much so right, and then you throw it all away by turning on this ball again. Like, you sh again... You're, you're making yeah. so many good contributions. You force them to make a save. They're bumping each other. You get a demo. You steal their boost. And then ball gets past you. It doesn't know. matter. Just look forward. Get back on defense. You've done enough. You know, you're, where's your teammate at? Teammate's a little far from the play. 
but your teammate should be seeing this. He's going for boost. This I would tell him this is a mistake. In Grand Champ level lobbies, this person's going to turn to the right. They're going to be going towards the midfield in case, you know, someone makes a play like you did. But then you get back to that point where it's like, okay, I've done what I wanted to. And um, you just go this way. You keep stealing the boost. And that lets your teammate know, hey, man, it's your turn to take this ball. You know, like, I trust you. I'm leaving the play. And people, people are smart. They'll see that and they'll be like, okay, my teammate's getting back on defense. I'm going to challenge this. So you do so much right. And then you try to go just one step too far. And now you're going to be slow getting back, you're wasting boost, and you turn towards the ball again! Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> you need to give your teammate the opportunity to make plays and pass the ball to you. The more you turn towards the ball, your teammate, like we said at the beginning, he's trying to be a good teammate. He's trying to play around you. He's not cutting you off. But you are going for the ball a few too many times and not letting him come at it with speed. You know, challenges are best when you go at them full speed, for the most part. So you need to let your teammate do that by not constantly turning on the ball. Like, look look at from his perspective. You know, he's ready to challenge, and then he sees you on it. So he's like, okay, I'm going to go back. And now he's running low on boost. He's awkward. And the other team has a chance to score. Yeah, that's so Could have been still an attack for uh, your team here. This, like... I, I don't know why you wouldn't just go up the midfield here. You're not helping behind him. You know, like, this is where you go and get open for a pass. If the pass doesn't come, then you turn back and you try to play off of whatever your teammate's doing, but you're not open for a pass here. You're just underneath the ball. This is not helpful. Like, here, here yeah, is where I would have wished you were yeah. before. It's okay, that's just a whiff. I'm, I'm fine that you uh, went for that again. <laughs> Notice the boost taps? Look at this. Bop, 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 bop. <laughs> Which, like, I can't even help but think that if you just, instead of, ta like, tapping your boost here, you just one speed flip to get to supersonic just, speed. Yeah, one speed let's, flip. Let's just imagine for a second that you get up the field just a tiny bit faster. So you would be, like, right here if you were going supersonic. That's scorable, you know, like, or, or maybe not scorable, but you at least get a better touch on the ball than, um, than how far away from it you were, you know. If you were a bit closer, your teammate can make a better pass, you maybe get the shot off to win the game. No. Okay. So... A lot to unpack in that one, but the primary thing is that it looks like, and I don't mean this in a mean way, but it looks like you're ball chasing a little bit too much, yeah, where you do so many so good things. You do a lot of really good things. That's obviously why you're champ three, but then you don't seem to know exactly when to give it up. So that's going to be your primary area of focus based on this replay alone. We're going to watch one more. But that should be your primary area of focus is when is a good time to leave this ball alone? And then what you should do is get behind your teammate, get far away from the ball, get ready to come back at it with speed. That's going to make a big, big difference in the amount of times you have the opportunity to score. So there you have it. I hope this coaching session was helpful and that you were able to pull on a few things that you can bring back and improve on in your own gameplay. If you're interested in coaching for yourself, my Discord will always be linked in the description of every video. And if you made it this far, please like and subscribe. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.